to Healy with a low health bar. X kick flashes, but Healy's out. Doesn't burn his own. Still? And now for the turn of rock, for the double. <laughs> Once again, Vitality are going to be happy to have a bed shape. Give him a triple and 4-0 start for video. He's straight up the Oriana. Good job, good job, good job, good job. Hughes, okay. There we go. Wait, where's he going? Back door. Oh. Back dooring. Running onto the next. And Zizky trying to stop it. Jump him in, but he flexes away. Photon's got it. He's got it. What a way to end the series. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the LEC. I'm Jeannie, joined with Karzi from Vitality, securing your first BO3 win here in the Spring Playoffs. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah, the fashion in which that was won, though, is that something that you expected coming into today? You were going up against SK. You guys chose them. I mean, I've, I expected us to kind of stomp them, too, because we had a really good practice. So, I mean, I guess the Yasuo was not it, you know, in the first game. Yeah, what happens on that Yasuo particularly? Because uh, you know how there's the meme of like when Yasuo is on your team and Yasuo is on the enemy team? You felt like the your team Yasuo. What happened? Um, I have PTSD playing Yasuo <laughs> into Cassante. Yeah. And uh, I just couldn't focus when I saw Cassante in the enemy team and then I kind of run it down. Yeah, well, it happens to the best of us, right? It happens to every Yasuo player. But eventually you guys managed to secure it in that final game with uh, Viteo going on the TF. Getting a backdoor in, what was the comms like at that moment in time? How did you guys keep that energy just going? Um, I, f I felt like it was pretty calm because Viteo was making sure that we play around him and we all knew that he's really strong in the game. And um, I was hoping that someone else would carry after the second game because I was kind of drained. <laughs> You're the 80 so, carry, right? <laughs> Come on. So I was very happy that uh, Viteo stepped up and uh, played really well and Photon as well. Yeah, first one stepped up as well. From the two of them, who do you think would be the player of the series? Me. I'm so sorry to burst your bubble, but that's not the case. The Kia player of the series is actually going to be Photon. He played really well. Thank so you. any words of appreciation for the top laners that sometimes have to carry the 80 carries that go 0-7 on Yasuo? I mean, I'm really happy that Photon picked Twisted Fate in the last game, and actually Jace in the second, and he played really, really well. Because usually you don't see this from EU top laners. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's always nice to see your Korean top laner stomp some kids. All right, well, we have Hilly on the other side for the PGL. Anything you want to say to him before we toss it over? No. No, nothing? Maybe, like, thank you for creating space? Thank you so much for creating space for me. Ah, you're welcome. I'm sure he'll say that. But we're going to be heading over back to PGL with Lore, Hilly, and Broxa. So, guys, take it away. <laughs> Everything was said here. Uh, thank you so much, Genius, and thank you so much, Harzi, for an amazing interview here. Uh, Hidi, any closing thoughts on whatever Harzi said or the game itself? I mean, I expected <laughs> Kazi to flame me, actually. Usually, if there is no camera, he'll say something like, please retire or something, you know, like something right. mean. But uh, uh, he's being nice in front of camera, so I like that. Behaving, that's, that's nice. Well, congrats on advancing to the next round, though. We're going to talk about the next series, though, because as Humanoid posted very eloquently on Twitter, Fnatic has won the regular season for the first time since summer 2018. And who better than two of the former member of that lineup to talk about these happier times for Fnatic? Because let me recap this. The last time Fnatic won the regular season, Fnatic ended up winning their last LEC title. LCK, um, KD Rolster won, won their last LCK title as well. I think this one was unnecessary. And I think in 2018, LCK had the worst run they had at Worlds ever. But that was great times for Fnatic fans, Broxa. Yeah, I mean, I had a pretty good time playing for Fnatic yeah. back then, I think. You know, obviously we were doing really well. We had some fun back and forth with G2 for many years. but. I think for us, like the entire journey from winning the regular season to winning the split and then the run at Worlds was pretty, you know, crazy and unexpected, even for us on the team. Worlds Finals that year, Hilly. Any, any other memories than making it to Worlds Final that you can think of when you think of this time, 2018? I mean, 2018 was like a, a roller coaster at first. Like we were having a lot of tough time in scrims. I remember yeah. we were struggling a lot, but that's what makes the good teams like great if they bounce back from these times and I feel like we did a very good job all together to resolve what our issues are because mm -hmm. every team has issues right but how they deal with it with them when it comes to like international events to play like on the big stage in front of like so many people and against really good players right then all these problems get like multiplied 10 times mm -hmm. and how you deal with these problems is something I think 
we did pretty well and yeah yeah i think you know being on a team is almost like having this kind of puzzle where back then all of us were so different both in terms mm -hmm. of personalities and how we wanted to play the game so at first you know we were all kind of banging heads trying to figure out how to get these puzzles to kind of work together but once we made it there which i don't think we fully did before the world's boot camp <laughs> that was a tough time at first but then everything just clicked and we were able to reach a world other level yeah and you guys still managed to make it to to world finals that year and uh, it was an amazing year for Fnatic. and when i think of Fnatic last year making five changes throughout the year this year they look like the most stable version of themselves that we, we've seen in years yeah, it feels like the roster that they now have is kind of amplified what was already existing as their core yeah. point, which is going to be Razork and Humanoid. Bringing Jun in has kind of solidified that, plus he's now working with the squad. And I think it sets them up really well in the early stages to then have this strong core that they can play through for picks in side lanes when they come into objectives, finding those moments in team fights where Humanoid can pop off. I think it's been great to see that adaptation as they've come into this year. And now it's going to be interesting seeing them versus Giant X because I feel like Fnatic is one of the most stable teams we have in the LEC right now, Helio. And when you look at Giant X, they're going to either be Gen GX or Giant XD. What is your read on GX so far and what we've seen from them? Um, I mean, I don't know how much info I can give, but yeah. I think Giant X is actually pretty good right now. Okay. And they've improved on so many things that when we practice against them, because we did it, I think, twice already, they feel like a totally different team and they seem way more on the same page than before. And I feel like this is what a good team is, right? Mm -hmm. if, even if you don't have the best players on every row, if they know what they're doing on the map and how to achieve their like, goals, yeah. it's, uh, it's a scary thing. And I feel like they're really good at it right now. I think it also looks like they were in this phase where you know, they were struggling, but then instead of just collapsing, they kind of built themselves back up. Like last week, one thing I thought was really interesting watching them was that in almost every single play they made, Every player was participating, every mm -hmm. player was part of it. Sure, it was usually Peach or Igna setting it up initially, but they were all ready to fight together. And I think, you know, finding that coordination and, and starting to build that identity has really helped them reach a world other level. I think Peach and Igna have been the standards for me, though. I think the way yeah. that they've actually coordinated in the early stages has been significantly better. Because when you look back, even like, say, a week and a half to two weeks ago, it was hey, Peach will wander in towards River by himself, he'll get cut off. Ignar then tries to set up the vision that Peach went for, he gets cut out and they, he dies as well. But this time they seem way more coordinated and it's given a much better early game to, uh, to Giant X. I mean, that's the thing. We, we saw nothing from the majority of the regular season into making 3-0 and clutching the last week, Healy. So coming into today uh, against Fnatic, a week changes a lot, especially with the new patch, best of series and everything. But do you think that we saw enough so that they could challenge Fnatic at least? Oh yeah, I for sure think that they, yeah. could, they would challenge and make it hard. And I even think that they will win, actually. All right. Because I feel like they're just a better team than uh, Fnatic right now. Even though they're, on theory, like, worse players. I think everyone can agree. I feel like they're just very, very... I don't know how to say, like, like a good team, uh -huh. honestly. Or at least that's what I've g gotten to practice against. And I feel like if they can transition their practice to stage, I feel like they'll make it really hard for nothing and I think they'll take it even. Spicy take, I love it. Healy, thank you so much. Congrats again on winning the Fury series. You. And Hysterious, back to you. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, I do like that one. Thank you very much, Law. It was a pleasure to get you into the next game. And for Healy to say that Giant X, he thinks Giant X will win against Fnatic. Quite the shocker. Seed. Yeah, that's, that is a big statement to open us up. Yeah, I mean, it ultimately comes down to can they replicate whatever practice they've been doing coming true. into this week true. Uh, based on the information that Hilly's just given us. So I'm, I'm excited. Fnatic they obviously do. finished the regular season in first place and they're going to make their way out onto the stage alongside Giant X. Some very familiar faces to this stage, along with players who are debuting this year. And of course, great to see the return of Ignar to the European stage. Going up against one of the new additions on Fnatic in Jun, who have definitely been stepping up in spring, yep. I think to the surprise of many. Noah and Jun finding their form in winter, but uh, in spring they definitely had an impressive run. Their playoffs run was cut short by Mad Lions in the uh, lower bracket best of five. But uh, let's see which team can make it further. Giant X, can they have a better performance than last split where they didn't get a single game? in playoffs that's it they had a, a rough setup right they had g2 in the upper bracket 2-0 then they got sent to the lower bracket and then they had matt koi who eventually were our second place team in the finals 
Uh, so Giant X, yeah, you want to put luck against it, but also the fact that being eighth seed in spring, uh, so excuse me, in winter, so didn't set them up for any favors. This split off though, I mean, it's been a very different story, hasn't it? The fact is Giant X has set on the desk, as we were alluding to, the three win streak pushed them up, pushed them into a much better spot. And now expectations have risen as we get into pick and ban. Fnatic on blue, Giant X red, Yorana <laughs> taken off. You've already seen against Odo, taking away the rumble feels like a must do. Taking away Jackie's Nico is also something I need to highlight. At the start of winter, this guy popped off with it. And it's something that a lot of teams now heavily respect. You have to imagine that Zeri is going to continue to be a priority for Fnatic. We've got four games of it for Noah, three games of Kaiser. Yep. So these Callista virus bans are very common in the current meta. No junglers have been banned just yet, but we get something like the Vi taken away. Razork has been showcasing a lot of volley there recently. It looks like oh. that they are just going to stick with the Vi. So you imagine, I was going to say, uh, I actually wasn't expecting the Rail, but of course it makes so much sense. Such a powerful flex pick in the current meta. We saw it consistently banned in our previous series by Vitality. Yep. Giant X. Now, how do they respond? Maokai is something that we've been seeing a lot from Peach. Of course, the Sejuani still a yeah, decent well, answer. Well, and uh, the Zeri response. Okay, so it's quite obvious who has been uh, scrimming who. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Will the Azir come through from Jackie's, I wonder? Um, Obviously, we haven't seen any Azir from these teams because it has been disabled on this patch, but Fnatic gonna take it away. Humanoid, for those that remember Worlds 2022, it was Humanoid's Azir that was single-handedly carrying a bunch of those games in the Worlds group stages. And it is a champion that is very scary to deal with. Cassante for Oscar makes a ton of sense. It's one of his best performing champions. It's his most played so far this yep. split as well. Are we going to get to see Jackie's on his Yone? Definitely a comfortable champion for him. Big smile on his face. I think it can be a solid matchup into the Azir. Very farm orientated. But instead, it's going to be the Twisted Fate. Of course, they can't flex this between yep. mid and top. We're yet to determine where that one will actually go as we already move into the second phase bands. Both these teams with a clear identity of what they wanted to do in their first half. Right now, we're looking at things like supports. The Rail being a potential flex pick. Something we've seen a lot from Jun. It wouldn't surprise me if Fnatic still pivoted that away into the support and instead put it um, and pick something else into the jungle. But so far today, if we're talking about supports, we've seen a lot of Nautilus bands coming through in that first series. And Nautilus has still been something that's paired up with Senna, yes, but also offered a really solid, consistent engage tool for teams. So will that be the final ban for Giant X or do they look to pick it up themselves? You've got the Talia on the other side, something that can move across the map. And I guess they assume that Odo is going to be taking that TF top here. Yep. That has to be the assumption, given that that's where you most commonly see it. Alternatively, we've been seeing it AD carry from Kazi, but with the Zeri already locked in, it's highly unlikely that it's going to go there. So they're limiting mid lane champions, supports being banned away from Giant X. Definitely indicates the Giant X want to get themselves to Portalus. Yeah. If not the Rakan, Yone actually yeah, going to yeah. be banned away. Okay, so Fnatic. Attacking Jackie's pulled a little bit. Rakan, a very common pairing alongside the Zeri. She's very safe when left isolated, which means that you can have the Rakan roaming around the map. We have a lot of great Rakan players in Europe, uh, and back when Ignar was a mainstay in our region, uh, this is definitely one of his champions that he's found success on. So what will Fnatic draft in this bot lane? What will the AD carry be? Will it be the Kai'Sa? <gasps> Are we gonna get Lucian Nami? I mean, Europe doesn't play it. As I was saying earlier on, the East still prioritizes this, but in EU, nice. in the West, Lucian Nami has not been successful. Gotta remember, this is a Korean bot lane, though. <laughs> okay, that breaks the rule. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Oh, they're a Korean bot it lane. Was, it's okay. Uh, it was Noah's Ezreal in winter that everyone was skeptical of, and then he had popped off on Room. the champion That's in playoffs. A very good point. So uh, let's see. Will the magic of this Korean bot lane from Fnatic be enough to find success in Europe on <laughs> this duo? Akali. Wow, they're going to round things out with an Akali. Now, Akali's success is determined by how much crowd control exists in the composition. Yep. There's not a lot to lock her down, especially when playing into Lucian Nami. A lot of damage potential, definitely from that bot side, but a lot of freedom and also just pairs up nicely with the Sejuani. A good mid-jungle combo where Akali does have kill threat on the Azir, especially in a side lane later on into the game. And there's no point and click, right? A lot of AoE, things like Nami, uh, whether it's Q or Ultimate. Rel as well, AoE. You say the same about Azir, Cassante maybe being the only thing with his R. A lot of the time, Akali's fear things like Nautilus R as well, where it's consistent and going to hit. 
What I love that point. What I'll say about Giant X's comp is it's very similar to what we saw from Vitality in game three, which is a lot of pick potential, a lot of side lane threat, one three one. The execution is inherently harder than, yep. say, a traditional team fight composition, just because it's very dependent on finding skirmishes, playing around vision, leveraging leads that ideally you want to find in the early game because of your strength in 2v2s, 3v3s, and your ability to collapse first with things like the Twisted Fate ultimate. But Fnatic, that bot side of the map is going to be crucial. We need to see this Lucian army finding success. Oh, yeah. And the thing is, if you can find success and then move it into the mid game, the amount of control that you have on the mid wave and in the mid game is can make it very difficult for Giant X to actually leverage the strength of their side lane. So a lot is going to rest on the success of this Lucian for Noah. Let's see how we go. Noah and Jun, we talked about their lane. We talked about this game of theirs in spring being a lot better, a lot more concise. As we get into this series, how much more? Our first versus our sixth place team Giant X with a three win streak to end it off. Now, if you're wondering, you're sitting there like, were the wins meaningful? It was against Rogue, it was against Vitality, which was a very big one, and Team Heretics to round it off. In the second week, opening up, Fnatic did 1-0 against GX. So if you just look at the head-to-head, -head, this has happened before, at least in a best of one format. I mean, on paper, Fnatics should be heavy favorites. I mean, they are first, first place. place. You know? <laughs> but. Uh, great season from them as well. Razzle continues to have a great year, but I then, think we can then say. Hilly said Giant X will yeah, win. Yeah, said. He said he thinks Giant X will win. Uh, so what, what is happening behind the scenes? I mean, all sorts of things. <laughs> Thank you. My, uh, my, my favorite story is one that Cadrill told me. Okay, I'll sit down. Which was, uh, he, he talked about how on XL, he, he didn't win scrims at all for like a week. They went right. like 0-15. Yep. And then... They went on stage and they 2 0 the weekend. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and, and so, if that wasn't confirmation that scrims don't mean anything, <laughs> is, yeah. there was also the Worlds where uh, G2 was like down, I think the score was something like 19 to 1 yeah. at Worlds one year. I think it was in 2018, 19, 19. The FPX year? No, uh, yeah, it was the FPX year, 2019. And uh, then they played in the best of five, G2 won, 3 1. <laughs> <laughs> scrims. Scrims, <laughs> and Fake news. Thank you too much. Good start of the lane, though, for Fnatic in the meantime. Lucian Nami. We expect the level three mark, the all-in, and the potency, as you're also expecting them to hit level two first. So keep an eye on that. As we kind of talked about as well, I want to see how this Akali goes mid. Feels very important. If we're just looking at Giant X on the other side, Betty, we know we talked about Fnatic. The 2v2 has to go well. It's the most volatile lane for them. If we look at Giant X, side lanes as well, solo lanes, I should say, especially this Akali, feels very important for them to get the ball rolling, or at least get out onto the map. I mean, so Akali's just going to sit and farm for the <laughs> first six levels. Yep. Yeah. Uh, she's not really going to have much kill threat for a while. Typically, you see some sort of sustain. So flick footwork is common. Going for Conqueror is what I would call a confident rune choice, yep. because it definitely gives you more damage. But your laning phase is just worse. Uh, because you're going to get chipped away in the range matchup, and it can be really horrible. Of course, you will have the TP to help mitigate some of that pressure. But um, also, we see Humanoid keeping that push up. H -E. Three Ooh, camp, four camp start into early gank. He's paying respect. Soldier was just put out, but shifting sands, nicely done. That timer was pixel perfect from Humanoid, so he gets out. I mean, a part of this play is also to just relieve the pressure from Jackies. If they get the flash out from Humanoid, great. If they don't, it's not the end of the world. Yep. Razork, though, information garnered from him. He uh, cleared out his top side. He's also done his Raptors and the Krugs. And now the fight for the Crab begins. Nice trading from Noah and Jun. Really good. Patrick hitting so low. Peach and Razork are going to fight it out on the other side. But the 2v2 has already won out from Fnatic. But when the mid laners get involved, crash down there. Jun. Flash Aqua Prison onto the enemy jungler. No one's been ignited, but he won't care. He flashes two, runs on in. Humanoid steals it from over the wall. And that's what you call working with lane lead for the Fnatic. I mean, this was such an ambitious play from Giant X to fight for that crab. Trying to skirmish against Jackies. Lucian Nami this early um, on is such a bold move. Yeah. And Humanoid, with the pressure that he had in mid as well, like, it was... He was always going to collapse first. True. And Akali can't really do anything. And now you've given an Azir a red and a blue buff. This Akali is not going to have a fun time in this mid matchup. So a well played from Fnatic. They draw first blood. Punish the aggression from Giant X.
I mean, first blood to Humanoid as well. Remember, this guy is a damage dealer or a fanatic. I was just looking at the regular season as Jackie's has to back away, at least for the time being. 33%. That's his average damage percentage on Fnatic. You'd expect <laughs> nothing less. I think as well, you know, seeing the success of Fnatic this split, like, we again remind ourselves why Raz or Humanoid in control of the map, in control of the game, is such a good thing for this team. Hello, Jun. Yeah, now he's just made it even worse for Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that man has to base. You can see a 10 CS lead now for Humanoids. Yep. The double buffs making that matchup just so horrible. Slow push coming out from Noah. Obviously has to be careful because his support is roaming. Top side of the map for Oduamne though. Small CS lead, but the gold is starting to mount thanks to his passive. Crash Eesh. down there. Oscarin in level six. That makes me pause, but still there might be enough damage. Gold card to be used only onto Razork. Oscarin has ghost for this, and now he has a flip back. Peach doesn't have a flash as his humanoid again. There's the flip. Oscar gets the kill. And Fnatic are running rings around the rosy of Giant X in this early game. I mean, big question marks as to what the plan was there for Peach. Okay. Starting on the grubs, like, you started topside. You should have anticipated Razok also starting on the top side. There's no reason that he wouldn't come back out onto the map on the top side also to potentially contest this next Scuttle Crab. Because remember, there was a whole fight in the bottom river. Yep. He still has priority mid, so there's no reason for him not to try and fight for the top one too, or at the very least get a bit of information to see it get cleared out, right? So the moment he sees that it's still up, why wouldn't he fight for the grubs? Wow. Nicely done, secures that. So great start for Fnatic overall. Now they turn their attention to mid lane. Jackie's in a bad spot. He's going to be shoved away, but the crash down furthers the stun. Jackie's with the perfect execution, gets him out, jumps in, fakes <laughs> it. Just in case we're on our toes. So any kill threat has now disappeared while his Completely. ultimate is on cooldown. Okay. Some trading coming out. Acro Prison, just in case. Yeah, uh, the idea was that if Ignard did try to get the knockup, as you rightly called, it would have connected with the Acro Prison. Features here. But Humanoid's in such a safe position, sitting on a soldier still. Well, he just used it, but <laughs> he uh, <laughs> had the ability to get away to safety. He's going to push this underneath the tower. Jackie's at about 50% HP. Soldier just went out. Destiny going to be used. Shifting Sands and the Flash. Odo has a red card. And he Doesn't has his Flash available, though. but he won't do anything. Knock up. As you said, Noah's going to be ignited, cleanses away from it. There's a big minion wave helping this out, though, as Patrick has taken the double up damage. Noah's still low, but now that Razork's here, the heal from Patrick to get him away, but Razork's still threatening. A lot of on the brink plays that don't end up happening. And it's around Dragon spawning now on the bottom side. What's well, been there for a while, you know what I mean? Maybe Dragon contesting a fanatic play around. Patrick, credit to him, some nice trades as a ulti from Oscar forces Ghost. the ghost out. Oduamne showing respect. Nice trade from Oscar. This is probably the champion that we see Oscar look his best on. Oh, got him. Wait, this is disrespect. Odo, a couple of Qs away from dying, jumps back in. Odo's out. He's got flash, remember, folks, but still, that was almost one disrespect away from dying. Well, glad just as I'm singing Oscar's praises, he showcases his moves on the champion. Yeah. Dragon was picked up in the meantime by Peach. Level six should be coming through relatively soon. One more camp and he should be able to pick that one up as well. But so far, it's Fnatic with the lead. Yeah. They find advantages in top lane, which is not what you expect from the TF. Obviously, he did try and look for a roam in mid, which cost him a little bit, but Oscar with some really nice trades. Mid lane, of course, thanks to getting first blood and an assist is helping him out. Oh, I have to highlight as well, Oscar getting himself a kill will also help with the gold difference that in top lane. Too. Uh, two assists for Razork. Means that overall things looking positive. The bot lane not going quite the way Noah would have loved. So far, Patrick has been finding the better of him in a couple of trades here and there. But uh, falling behind the laning phase, I mean, he's not behind, it's fine. But uh, <laughs> falling a little bit behind in the yeah, event yeah. that he does is not the end of the world solution. It's that mid game where the champion spikes super hard anyway. Yep. But right now, Fnatic fans should be feeling pretty confident. No neutrals to play for right now. Grubs in about a minute is something that both these teams could look to fight for, but instead they'll be looking for ganks, summoner spells, and any of the opportunities as camps are respawning for the junglers. You said it. A minute till those grubs. Jackie's continuing to get battered away. We'll see what Humanoid has at that point as well, because he might have himself an early Leandris. As remember, he's going for Grasp. At last series, we still saw uh, picking up things like the Nashes instead of going straight for the tank after the said Leandris. So we'll watch the build path for you there just for a little while. This Fnatic can continue getting pushed in here as well with Giant X's dra uh, 
jungler, excuse me. It's been a weird day of it, you know? It's been a strange one. I think the first series, yeah. that was action packed, yeah. that it made the, you know, the tongue is now bleh. It's all blurred up. Set me up for this. Quickness. Humanoid. Shifting Sands coming out. No, not yet. Does he have Mercs? Lamont? He does. There's the ulti out, but back in is Jackie's. Nice setup from Ignar. He'll take the turret shots because Jackie's is on the board. Very nice play from Giant X. What else is there to say? I mean, they landed the CC perfectly. Humanoid had no flash. They find themselves a kill. So, as you rightly called, Hysterics Giant X are now on the board. Dragon in two and a half minutes. Grubs are up. And Razork making his way towards them. The thing about Odo in this matchup is you can tell he's scared. And uh, against Cassante, obviously a scary champion, but because he lost, sorry, because Cassante got that kill earlier and he had earlier access to some of these items, it's, uh, it's a much harder matchup to play. He is quickly closing that gold gap though, Odo Omni, as long as he continues to farm smartly. Yep. Play the patient game, is passive, will do the work for him. So not in the worst of positions at the end of the day. First items. Should be coming through very soon. Just as I say that, Static Shiv now picked up for Noah. So first on the board. You've also got Lockett here for Razor. Note that that pickup came through a couple of minutes ago. So protective items already building up here. As Humanoid just gets over the wall. Jackie's jumping into the smoke screen. Razor's here, but Destiny now burnt. Odo Army, a greedy position. He has to flash over the wall. Razork was there as Oscar and just TP'd in. The Cassante ready to all out, flushes behind and gets in the way, or rather just runs it. Oscar and is now dead. Odo is out of the picture while we look at this fight for Humanoid, trying to front to back. Confused because now Razork gets to flush away. A lot of moving parts there that decided to move the opposite way. Ultimately, it's a kill in favor of Giant X. All five members find themselves in mid. After what was just Giant X looking for a bit of a cheeky pick. Patrick is going to make his way back to bot lane. A nice juicy wave for him to catch. Hope we get a replay of that because the collapse was so fast from everyone. Right, we saw that the ultimate coming in from Odo. He's then forced to flash early. So here we see the Destiny come through. Nice response from Jun. Knocks him up. The chain CC is good. He's forced to flash. Here comes Ignar, the TP in from behind. Jackie's flashes early. Smart move to avoid getting Cassante ulted. And then when Oscar ults, I guess the crucial thing here is that Humanoid and Oscar are just too separated from their team. They kind of found themselves in a four versus two. Only now does Noah arrive, and his damage is very good. But had he been in the fight a little earlier, I think that could have been a lot more favorable for Fnatic. Unfortunately, he couldn't quite get involved in the fight. And so uh, Giant X are able to punish. Two to two now, the kills. A 1k gold deficit for Giant X, but not the end of the world as Dragon spawns in 10 seconds. Okay, so let's see how the fight plays out. Again, we'll tell you in a second. Fnatic do have the gold under their belts in core carries. Humanoid Noah, we've already said before, these guys are the ones going to be dealing damage as the static ship was picked up a little bit earlier on. We still don't have the first item from Humanoid as he went for a Dark Seal. And remember, he did go for the, the Merc Treads earlier too. Just watching to see if Jackie's will have his first item. The answer won't be because that dragon's already up. He go, instead goes for the perfect execution and onto Humanoid. He should find it, but out of range. No, you're not. Jackie's with another kill. This Akali might be set up for this game as Giant X open this dragon play with a nice kill. Nice play from Jackie's. Confidence starting to shine through. No, we're up. Peach is in trouble. Aqua Prison out with the Arctic Assault. The answer is no there. Fnatic might be to this dragon, but remember there's a teleport for Jackie's to join back in. Damage from Lucian is something to be feared. Giant X is respecting it for now. Good ward. TP's from Jackie's from behind. He doesn't have the ulti, but he has the position. Quickness starts us off. Watch Jackie's on to Noah. Jun can't save the day. The E won't work, but the culling into everyone is the TP from Humanoid right where he wants to be. But where's the ulti coming through? Patrick over the wall survives for now. Fnatic make this messy again, but it's turned into their fight. Jackie's will sure can flip away while Peach gets up on the left side, rather right. But as he runs, I mean, Fnatic don't find any kills, but they find themselves positioned again in front of Dragon. The target selection was a little all over the place for Fnatic. Very true. Patrick got isolated with a good flash over the wall. Humanoid doesn't have any Sand Soldiers left to spawn to be able to finish that one off. Then they were kind of divided on whether they should chase Peach or chase Jackie's. I imagine that they're saying Jackie's is a shutdown that's trying to get the kill over onto him, but then he's able to create space thanks to his E, and then they decide to turn to Peach, who then has the dash away, and so 
Fnatic don't actually convert that into anything. The dragon slowly falling. Razork should be able to get this. Might. Does come through and he crashes down over the wall. So one apiece here in the early end for dragons. But Herald is up. And after that, I mean, Razork has to retreat for Giant X. They'll have mid and Vedius. I think they'll have their pick of the litter up in this top side, including the Herald. Definitely looks like it, doesn't it? Ignar moving into the enemy jungle, getting some deep vision down. I will say, Giant X, I think, performing above expectations. I know Hilly believed in Giant X to be able to win out on this series, but we're seeing some really nice team fights from them. Boom. They're punishing the mistakes from Fnatic, playing around these summoner spells well. The destinies haven't quite connected from Odo, but uh, the fact that they're making those proactive plays shows that the team is kind of on the same page and looking to try and make stuff happen on the map. You talked about the Herald largely being set up nicely for Giant X, and this looks like an uncontested objective as Odo Omni continues to chip away at that tower. Humanoid doing the same thing in bot lane. Jackie sure can flip there, but Tara's gonna go down, so Humanoid just takes that one. First Tara Blood. Over to Fnatic, brings in gold, but Giant X, remember, bring in the Herald and might even find themselves topside turret with it as well. We'll just see how that's proactively used. As I want to point out, you know, for Giant X, we've been pleasantly surprised. As we said for Fnatic, some of the plays have been disjointed. We also haven't seen the Lucianami take over or at least find themselves isolated targets, burst them down and escalate this mid game. But now Giant X holding on strong and the fact that the gold is even here. And we have an Akali that's 2-0 up. You got to think for Giant X, it's a good start for this game. Oh yeah, great. I mean, I'm a big Ka Akali enthusiast. Love no. the champion. I love playing her. So uh, second or third to Nocturne? What's the, what's the... Oh, she's first. Akali over Nocturne? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your identity is in shambles. I mean, Nocturne's never been my favorite champion. Fun fact, as the fight right. starts. Flash, Shattering Strike, a crash down two for Fnatic. Where's the pick going to follow through? Two ulties! Odo Omni flashes for two ulties. Herald now mid. But Wait a minute. <laughs> Just a... He spawned it over the wall and then got through the wall using Shelly. That's tech. That's hot tech. Aqua Prison used. Shelly helps push up, but Patrick needs to get the damage down and he will. So Giant down X. In the meantime. Damn. I'm impressed. They unlocked the mid tower. Nicely done. Top going to be exchanged by Fnatic. Nice play from them. Odo Omni coming. lives. He has the destiny. And remember, there's no flash available. He's got no ulti available. That mistake from Fnatic before the over committing with the quickness. The kill goes to Peach. That's just sad, but still punishing Fnatic's mistakes. Giant X, yes, are still impressive. Oscar now trying to put pressure onto this tier two in bot lane. I don't think he'll be able to secure it. He does not do that much damage. Having five grubs definitely helps. Definitely does, actually. But uh, here comes Odo Amne. Wait, maybe I'm wrong. I, I, I might be completely wrong. I think he's going to get it. He is indeed. Who cares if you get gold card and you're a Kassante. Clear the wave, they say, but 700 gold. gold. Nice. Okay, Oscar, I see you. Nicely done. Humanoid, though, reminder that even though he did die, he still has a gold lead over the, the Akali. Yeah, true. Working towards that Nash is second. And uh, this game is pretty interesting. Hysterics. Mainly because while Giant X have done some really nice things in terms of found some good fights and uh, have secured some nice objectives, they're still behind in gold. Yeah. And uh, these fights are going to determine a lot, obviously, in terms of how things play out. Remember that Giant X's composition a little bit harder to play out. Yep. But let's see how things actually pan out in reality because truth is, theory and reality, especially when it comes to European League of Legends, never quite match up. <laughs> At least you're honest. Nash's tooth finished for Noah. I mean, let's be real, it's the reason why we didn't see Lucian Nami, because in theory, we know how big the mid-game power spike is, we know how big they are, especially when they come out of lane with Equilibrium or a small lead. I mean, there's a two-item Lucian on our screen with Imperial Mandate. We should be seeing Noah and Jordan really push the lead like they do in LPL, LCK. They sit, they look for a pick, and they, they go over the top. But we're not getting that here this game for Fnatic. And their tools, as we said, sometimes are not coinciding. Now, Dragon, as you mentioned just before, 30 seconds away. Baron is a minute as well. As the Sun Turret in the Sun Sphere, in the Sun Land, is going to be dropped down. But Jackie's jumps over it. The Empress Divide was good, but Jackie's didn't get the Shuriken Flip, so no extra damage. Perfect execution, waiting, waiting almost. And he flushes at the end. He thought he could outplay Humanoid, but that's Merrick Bruster. 
Listen here, rookie. Stop it. Humanoid is not someone you can pick a fight with, and he wanted a bit of revenge after how that early game went. 1.4k gold lead is the advantage he has in mid. The man has been branded as absolute cinema this split. He is. And that was a picture performance play. Goal gap extends for Fnatic. They'll secure another Dragon too. But a slight blunder made by Jackies will not write him off in this game. He's definitely not completely down and out. It's just that you look at that farm. <laughs> 50 CS now behind Humanoids. A tough place to be in, specifically in terms of XP. So a nice trade initially. Good connect onto the E. And... Uh, a couple of misses here, I guess, hurt. Well, so it's because the tower shot adds so much damage. He does that well. You'll notice the E doesn't quite connect. The second E could have made all the difference. Yeah. He tries to do auto Q into execute, and then he flashes away from the sand soldiers, thinking that if he can't hit me with one of them, then I can live. Unfortunately for him, it was too late. Yeah. So uh, he ends up dying. As Does get said, outplayed. As you said, big kill for Humanoid, because yeah, Humanoid is still so far ahead of the current in this game. 1.5k to reiterate. Yep. And two items now versus one and a half. I mean, you also mentioned that Jackie's not out of the game, but seeing Humanoid on Azir again, just like you mentioned, we saw it Worlds previously. I think everyone's seen Humanoid Azir one time or another. It was a shame when this champion was unplayable in 14-5, but it's a new patch, baby. He's enabled again, and that same respect for his Azir return. So despite the early deaths, we still see a team fighting tool. One more importantly, Another follow-up engage tool that for Fnatic they can use alongside people. I will say, you know how in Valorant, competitively, they ban maps? Yeah. Like every, like, I don't know how often it is, but like maps will be removed from the pool. Oh, they yeah, do yeah, it in CS yeah. as well, right? Yeah, vetoes, yeah. Yeah, I think it'd be really cool if uh, uh, certain champs were competitive. Oh, like, a, like, a, like globally? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, like in, in Valorant, what they do, I mean, it's the same in CS, just certain maps throughout the season are just removed. That's a, that's a good idea, actually. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people like, enjoy the fact that Azir was just removed. I right? mean, Yumi banned every year, no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Yumi is not of playable course. and competitive. Uh, of course. I know you and Medic have been speaking, that's haven't you? That's the first rotation, yeah. for sure. <laughs> Yumi. Uh, and now there's a bad Yumi chance. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah. not even in the game, guys. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Quick is going to start up, though, as Giant X looks for another fight. But Fnatic are the tanky ones here. Ignace to run for his life, while Oscar Renin is zoning him down. Flash away from the Rakan. That's huge. He gets out thanks to Peach, but a follow up engage tool now taken down in front of the face of things like Baron. Could be dangerous for Giant X. Well. A really good idea, the, by the way. The problem <laughs> that Giant X are running into is that they're very quickly losing control of the map. I will bring up the mini map once more, and you kind of look at the. That's not the button I wanted. This was the button I wanted. How you going, man? Oh my goodness, my button. Thank you, buttons. <laughs> there we uh, go. They have good vision control pretty much now. Uh, throughout the entire bot side of the map, you can see them setting a vision to allow Marek yep. to keep pushing in through the bot side of the map. Originally, that top pressure that they had as well meant that Fnatic was suffocating that top side, and Giant X have just used this time while I was kerfuffling with the minimap <laughs> to clear that vision out and regain some control. But now it's so much easier for Fnatic to move into the river with their restocked vision and then just start cleansing all of this out again, making it that much harder for Giant X to potentially contest the Baron, and that becomes a point that they become very scared of. So Giant X very quickly losing control over uh, their half of the map. And it's a scary place to be in when you're only 23 minutes into the game. So much of your structures have been lost and it makes it that much easier for Fnatic to play. And just in case people forgot, oh, for goodness Baron sake. is just over there. Just over there. Okay. So if anyone needs to see where, where the pit is, shout out to Medic. <laughs> That's where Did it is. Did he tell you to use that one? <laughs> no, I just, uh, no, I remember watching you guys last week. And he had a great time. He just kept bringing it up. I don't know why that exists. I don't know who let that on there. The fact that it's not removed <laughs> means that it is okay. It's just so big. You know? Yep. Unnecessarily big. Yep. Now, Jackie's is securing a bot tower. Has the TP as well. Full level behind Humanoid is Fnatic grouping as five, pushing onto this tier two in the top lane. That's a tanky front line. 
Odo Amna is not doing any damage. It's going to turn into a fight. Over this turret, the engage is there, but it's Razok defending and already Odo's just dead. Patrick soon to go with his fanatic fight this on the wrong angle, but it's front to back, so it doesn't matter. They're on the wrong side of the map, but it must be so right. No, with a quick double as Giant X has soon dissipated. Fnatic have turned this dive into a brilliant move as Jackie sits in fog of war. His own creation oh. might get out, but over Humanoid says no. Nah, that was smooth, but you ain't going to be a criminal in front of me. And Fnatic regain control. The crowd pumps them up, and Baron gives them all they got. I mean, we talked about control earlier. Fnatic transition that control into the top lane. They threaten the tier two knowing that Jack is his bot. And even though he TPs in, it's just not the impact the Giant X needed. They one shot Odo Omne right from the get go. They turn their attention onto Patrick. A nice ultimate from Humanoid. Oscar Rinnan with the follow up is clean. And then they just chase down the remaining Giant X members. Ignar forced to run away. Jack is with some really fancy feet here. Nice ult EQ. Noah tries to stay safe. He gets isolated. Alt into E, very nicely done from Jackie's. Ends up getting one back. <laughs> Bit of a chuckle matter. there from Oscar. But uh, ends up being a Baron for Fnatic, who are now in full control of this game. They'll move to the soul point as well. If we even get to the point of getting a soul in this game, it surely feels like it'll be Fnatic's. You know, Noah as well, with a bit of a boost up here in the mid game too. A bit of a boost in the items. Three and a bit now. A lot of damage coming from this Lucian. As we've seen, the ability to press forward for Fnatic ain't an issue here in this game either. And just a quick side note while we're tracking earlier on, Humanoid 266 CS at the 25 minute mark. Hell, Noah's even got a high CS mark as well. Everyone from Fnatic suffering from success as they use this Baron to push in bot. While well, Oscar captures top and has a TP to get on him, but he's engaged. Oh. The flank is there. Razdorf with the setup. The tidal wave is a massive tsunami. But now, look at Oscar in the back line dealing with four people. Jackie's doing the same, though. Hang on, Jackie's. He flushes the Aqua Prison. The rookie is the hope of Giant X. Buying time is big because now Patrick still alive. Odo repositions onto Humanoid. Patrick's there. Fnatic, this might not be your fight until Humanoid flies on in. Fnatic regain control. The gold card on a Cassante is nothing. And all you need is Marek. And the fight is still yours. Jackie's making a really nice play to shut down the bot lane off Fnatic. Unfortunately, Giant X is just too far behind. They can't convert it into anything else. The inhibitor is going to fall. And Humanoid finds a triple kill. Oh, this is bait. This is bait. Odoane runs in. This is bait as he flies away. The range is there. Ignar now here. He tried That's to four. save the day. Another kill over to Humanoid almost. But Ignar goes back to base and just another one on top for Humanoid. Almost a pentakill for Humanoid. A delay one at that, but well played from him. Catches Patrick out. A little bit more time and that play from Jackie's might have been enough to win a team fight for Giant X, but... Room. Given that Humanoid still had his ulti available, it meant that Giant X couldn't quite pull it off. Nice stuff still from Jackies, but the pressure remains strong from Fnatic. They move their attention to the mid tier two. They have a wave pushing in top lane as well. And now begins another siege. Trying to get the most out of this Baron, 10 seconds left. I mean, they're gonna get a huge amount out of it. This push coming in is gonna help accelerate the minions in and look at all the little termites following through. Now with inhibitor going down as well, it'll be double inhib. And look, Giant X are like, should we pull the trigger? There's a gold card at the ready, but no acceleration of play. Fnatic now moved to top side after what was a three, three and a half K Baron power play. Even without the Baron minions, they're so far ahead. Do they even need them? That's a great question. I don't know if they do. The problem is there's no pressure elsewhere on the map right now. Maybe Fnatic don't I care. They don't <laughs> care. There's the ulti following through from Peach, so he starts it off onto Humanoid, but the tidal wave with the Magnet Storm! That is the Avatar! Fnatic bring out all four elements in one swift move, and the dirt is gone of Giant X. This game is done. Fantastic team fight from Fnatic to close this one out. It's under 30 minutes. They make it look clean, and Fnatic is looking to lead the series. Man, for what was back and forth for a while, Fnatic made short work. Of accelerating their lead once they had it. Game one, it was push and pull, but it's still Fnatic's in the end. Humanoids. I mean, 
What else is there left to say? Another cinema performance from him. Absolutely. Definitely cinema. got caught out a couple times in the early game. He found himself a one and three. I thought that that was going to be enough, but it was not quite. They shut down. Humanoid found a way to bounce back, and we'll see if Giant X can bounce back after this break. Even the biggest champ needs a break. I'm tired. Me too. So, uh, what do you think? On to the next one? Let's go. Come on. Hey, shouldn't you be on stage right now? Hey, you got a pick. Tom Kent? What? I, I was not expecting this. Crazy off made a pick that secured you the win. How did you come up with it? Oh. Uh, I just listened to my gut. Welcome everyone to the Kia Tilt Proof Challenge. We're here to see if four gamers can stand up to the test. But this oh! <laughs> 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 ah, I think I lost. I'm so happy that I didn't eat before. <laughs> 